I'm Stevie Ward of Leeds Rhinos and Mentality Media. I'm here at Adam Cuthbertson's comfortable abode. And I'm joined by Adam Cuthbertson and my main man, Jamie Jones Buchanan. Welcome to the first ever Mentality podcast. So we're back. We're back on the podcast couch. Jones is back from out behind the camera. And I reckon we uh, we best crack on with what we want to talk about, boys. It's good to have you on. Good to have you on. Pleasure, Ward, as always. It's always great to have you here. I was going to say to be here. But I love it, mate. I'll, yeah. I'll be honest with you. When I, when I first come to Cuffball's house, I was surprised. It just seemed another dimension to the guy. Yeah. It's mm. already a crazy dimension watching him on pitch, isn't he? He's got yeah. different talents to everybody else, but come out in here and uh, hopefully we'll be able to get a full, proper little bit of an episode, a few minutes of, uh, of all the Cuffball's garden because it's ace. Yeah. Delving into the mind of Adam Cuthbertson. You don't want to go on that mind. You do, you do. You no, want you to navigate it carefully though, don't you? You do, you just don't want to get off track. You just want to, you just want to stick to the path. Yeah, it's good. We were, ch- we were chatting actually just before you got here, Jonesy, about some of the content that might be on the podcast and what stuff we talk about. And um, Cuthbert went, oh, wow. <sighs> that's, that's deep. I said, mate, you don't have to make it deep. You can do whatever. You can say whatever you want. But he's got some stories as Cuffbo, he's got some episodes. Um and I reckon it's good to have Cuffbo on along with yourself because um I guess you two are a lot wiser than me and know what's going on a bit more and a bit more experiences. Cuffbo's been around quite a few various clubs in in Australia, um, in various parts and, and obviously you Jonesy, you've you've been knocking around Leeds your own life, but you've been through your own uh, your own patches and and different things that go that are going on, so it's good to have you two boys on to kick it off, I guess, and give some insight because you you know a lot more than than I do. We're obviously from two different worlds, man, Jonesy, and and yourself, but mm. the same world, obviously. Get that for your head. It's from Morley, Wardy. Morley. The worrying Morley thing though. is the the world that's inside his mind. <laughs> that's that's the worrying thing about Wardy. We're going to try and get that out today. Where are we yeah. starting, mate? Where are you kicking us off? Where are we starting? Um, so I think I think the theme that run through the Mentality podcast is, I, I think a lot of people say that we need to talk about mental health more and and you know either open up about stuff or make it more of a, a spoken topic. Um, so what I thought is is start a podcast off. It doesn't have to be the nitty gritty things to mental health or anything like that, but for the reason for me doing it is to kind of talk about I think you mentioned it Jonesy like the, the different the t- different types to, to attack things or to, to go towards things and what mentality is is exploring the cultures um, exploring like the the different understanding of society that's around mental health you know so how do the different people treat it you know how have different people suffered um, and what goes on for, for inspirations around it you know like I'm, I'm thinking a lot of a lot of stuff that I, that has inspired me is, is stuff in music. You know, when I first you know spoke about depression or you know anything different like that, it was getting a bit of motivation from you know people like Kanye West and Kendrick Lamar and um, and people that are, that had opened up about it, but have a bit of a story around it and and try and and try and put it out into to normal. You know, normalising it really. So. I don't know if any of you have any insights on, on what you reckon towards that. Well, or just, just for me, really quickly, just uh, mental health. When you think about your brain, people can't always quantify mental health because it's not something you can grab, it's not mm. tangible. But yeah, if you think about your brain as an organ, that's where your mental side, of your, your, your body, your personality comes from. So first of all, ask you about your, how you're treating your brain, your brain chemistry, how much sleep you're getting. A lot of people bang on and talk about what food they're eating and how ripped up they want to be and drinking this coffee and that coffee in the morning and getting these perks. For me, are you getting enough sleep? Mammals die quicker if you're deprived of sleep than you would if you're deprived of food. Um, how much tea and coffee are you drinking? I'd give up tea and coffee for Lent um, because I wanted to go through this bit of a human experiment, a bit of a mental journey, see where that took me. And for the first three days, it was horrible. Uh, mother dicks but um, back end of it it's been fine now it's gone I've stopped being a slave it's not a habit to me um, so how, how are you treating your health you know what things are putting in your body and uh, what mental neural pathways are you opening up and gratifying because you can gratify your brain by achieving something 
uh, delayed gratification, going on a long journey and working hard, persisting, persevering to get to a reward, that's a long way down the line. A lot of people don't have the mental discipline to do that. So in between, they've got to give themselves some sort of self-medication, whether it be uh, sugar, chocolate, uh, going out, having a few beers. And there's not wrong with that. There's not wrong with that in the right portions. But how, how are you treating your mental health? Uh, secondly, oh, I really want to impress upon you today something I learned in 2016 and a bit of 17 is I've been spending a bit of time with people in uh, in poverty and uh, I went in there thinking I've had a fair bit of adversity in me over my, my time, my career, I've gone over this and that, I'm going to have all answers and uh, when I walked in my reality totally changed because I was sat listening to these different people who've had experienced reality completely different and the one thing without going too deep into it that stood out was this phrase called social isolation. And what I realised was that every problem, every challenge, every piece of adversity I've had to come through, get through, I've never had to do it alone. Mm. And I don't believe that human beings are very good. We're not created, I believe we're all created in God's image. I don't believe that we are good at deal with problems or with joy on our own. I think it's very tough. So having, having that social connection, you know, and I know Cuffball's single and uh, he's got a lot of things to occupy himself and he, he's, he expresses himself and he's got us as friends. And I'm, I'd be interested in how uh, Cuffball uh, lives in a different country, uh, in a new yeah. land, with all these challenges and pressures that me and you've got. Yeah. But at the end of the day, we, I can go home, I've got four kids and my wife who love me no matter what, whether they're going to lose. I've got teammates and friends that I grew up with. Uh, so for me, social isolation, being on your own, is the biggest challenge that human beings can go through. Uh, and I think that really is what really tests our mental health. Yeah. Um, just jumping off the back of that, it's, this is in my short-term memory, reading a book called The Path, which is based upon Chinese philosophy. And um, what you mentioned there is about social isolation. And you've kind of you've kind of put yourself in their situation for a bit. Um, yeah. you, you've gone in there with your perspective. So everything you've had to deal with over, the, you know, injuries and, you know, different stuff that, that you've had to go through, you've gone there thinking your perspective is, is more or less there. You know, everything you kind of... As human beings, we don't really want to be wrong. You know, we, we go into things thinking we're always right about stuff because we're guiding ourselves against stuff that might happen. But you've gone in there and, and you've kind of seen another perspective. And I think that this book's mentioning kind of shifting your perspective to what other people might see. Yep. Whether whether that's, you know, whether that's someone that's dealing with poverty, whether that's someone that's, you know, whether it's a 60-year-old lady walking down the street, you know, take, try and transform your perspective and vision from your own thing, you know, your own ego, walking around every day, seeing different things which which are carrying on, you know, you, you've always got a story that you're making for yourself. And I think that's that helps, and it certainly helped me um, kind of discover, you know, what other people are seeing, what other people are doing. And uh, that, that was a reason for mentality, really, because one big reason behind it was to, to, tr to try and convert what athletes go through, um, whether it's negative or positives, so that fans could see that side of it, you know, because they've got, you know, they've got the the Sky Sports kind of macho image where there's robots playing before the game, you know, they they see it all, you know, and and then they go straight into the Friday eight, Friday eight p.m. game, you know, it might be Leeds Rhinos versus Wigan Warriors, which is coming up very soon, um, so they've got that perception. So I guess what mentality is as well is is broadening their perspective, and and like you say, I think you can never have as many perspectives and you know just different ways to look at things you know and and you've hit the nail on the head there you know that's it's when you told me that you know it kind of it changes your views a bit and, and brings you back down to earth i guess i know man you've spoken about it numerous times over coffees and i think i've been brought up with jonesy um a few times that when you're young and you look at your parents and you think they've got it all figured out yeah and you think you just hold them in such high regard you just think they just know the way and then you get older and you realize they're just like everyone else <laughs> and you go wow they, they've got errors in their life and yeah, um, yeah. struggle their own struggles and that and you think well maybe i've maybe i've got to take over and take control and um i think that's the perspective you see of other people um when you're just cruising everyday life down the street if you see someone driving a nice range rover or you're on your instagram seeing like a good photo yeah. or something like people people so-called successful you know um based and you're, you're taking your opinion and you're looking at it from just seeing a photo, simply a photo, but you don't know what's going on in their life. And I think often um, in our circumstance, fans think that of us. They think um, they think we've got it all sorted, figured out, all mm. sorted, uh, just because 
you know, we're either successful in 2015 or we're not in 2016. So they always think, they always think, you know, we may or may not have things under control. And that I think um, too often people think the answer is so easy to find, it, but it's 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 not. And um, you're talking about isolation, um, and I think um, I think I, I, I watched on um, Good Morning um, Britain. Britain the other day, and I was, they were talking about how it's becoming a, a, a bigger and bigger problem. And um, people are trying to figure it out, but yet you go to training and people are still isolating themselves because they're going to training or I keep referring back to training because that's what we do for a living, to work or to hang out with their friends or for a coffee or for lunch or for dinner. Yet they're all sitting around looking at their phone. Um, yeah, and yeah. That, and that's, that's, that's isolating yourself. That's not getting out of your comfort zone and, and talking and um, getting amongst people and, and finding that, you know, that outward look it's it's you're going out there you're still isolating yourself and i think that's becoming a bigger and bigger problem and it, not many people know this but jonesy doesn't doesn't um have all the social media um the 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 twitter and the instagram and your snapchats etc i think um I, I respect jonesy a lot for that and i'd love to be able to go back and understand what that's like i'm never you're never too deep to to get rid of that but um I think that's becoming a, and people got to understand it's becoming a bigger and bigger problem because it's growing your expectations of your kids and that, and they, and they feel like they're failing because of all these, um, these people. Not, not you can look up to them, but there's, there's you got to look at it from a realistic um, point of view as well. And I think, I think back on the isolation thing, um, for the first time in, so I've lived my whole life. I grew up on the, um, the beaches, living my whole life around my family, friends, or a girlfriend. Up until 2016, where things went back pear shaped with my uh, with my ex, I've never I've never been alone. I've never not had family around the corner or friends around the corner, or I've never been as so far from home as I was in 2016. And I had to deal with that in a big way, and it took me a long time to get around my head around it. And I think that was a big big part of my problem in 2016 was I just didn't have balance in my life and get it right. And it's because I had to learn from scratch. Literally, it was like a kid thrown in the deep end. Yep. It's like um, first day of school for me, sort of thing. Like I went from let, went from having a partner or family back home or friends to just turn to all the time, to just going right. You're 24 hours away from home in another country. Winter's around the corner. It's pouring, raining. You got nothing to do every other day, and. Um, that's not a bag out of the country or anything like that. It's just, it's just reality, isn't it? Um, no kids. I have my, my um, cat and dog. <laughs> They're probably, no, we laugh now. We laugh now. And, you know, the boys and that take the piss out of uh, me having a cat. Well, I'm 32 this year. I've got a cat and dog. No kids, etc. cetera. Um, and sometimes, you know, the boys take the piss out of it and that. But um, reality is my cat and dog probably were the biggest saviors of my career, life, whatever you like to say about it. Um, and they, they really brought a bit of a balance into my life and um, in a tough way, it's, 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 it's hard to say, but they, they really did save me last year. And obviously my inspiration behind gardening and that and just keeping busy and trying to find things to do. Um, but a few months there, I was really, I was really struggling due to isolation and, I, and especially during those winter months where um, sort of the weather's a bit foreign to you. So you can't, you know, for me, you know, it's a bit harder to, get out and do those things that I would have loved to do in the past or with, you know, your, um, your partner in the past. Just on that, what is it about, obviously we looked at those paintings and um, we'll have a look at your yard and all the work you've done. What is it, what's in that practice, you know, what is in that kind of, so I, when I think of training, when I think of, you know, playing a game, it's like, you know, a game's like an 80 minute meditation. You know, there's nothing else in your life that matters. You go out, you do you do exactly what you do, and you don't think of what you're gonna do. You just do it from, from like a, you know, from like an awareness. Really, it just you just it just flows. You know, um, what is it about painting and doing stuff in the yard, which is, which either takes your mind off you because this is something that I want to touch on a lot. Um, I think it's very easy to to be feeling down or to be feeling you know depressed or whatever it is to get yourself in that that isolated mode you, you might just sit on the sofa and you might go on Instagram or you might just kind of get in that zone where you're not feeling great but you're comfortable with it do you know what I mean and just what's what's your take on that and and, and why did you decide to take action and do something 
I had too many days last year where I was going, and everyone will know this this um, this this routine. You go, oh, I'm going to get on my phone to check who's messaged me or called me. Yeah. Then you find yourself on Snapchat, you find yourself on Instagram, you find yourself on Twitter, yeah. and for some reason you do it again and again and again because you're looking for that that something to connect with. Yeah. Um, I did too many days of that, and it was depressing. Like you get a buzz out of it at first. Obviously, that's why it's created. That's why it's so successful because people get that buzz out of getting a like dopamine, or a comment. Dopamine. Yeah, yeah, the dopamine hit. Um, but there was just too many days of that, and it's becoming boring. And I'm not that type of person. Like myself, I'm uh, I'm very outgoing, and I try to be as creative as possible. And I'm, I suppose I haven't really done too much um, creativity when I got to this country, just because I didn't have my own property and etc. So yeah, when I, when, I, when I was going through that phase, I just thought, right, it was winter, I had nothing better to do, I'm gonna get started in the yard, so when summer comes around, I can really have a good lifestyle, a great lifestyle. And the big part behind it all is um, that sense of um, being creativity, the creative, sorry, um, is a real uh, sense of, uh, you get this real sense of accomplishment when you finish doing a painting or, you know, whether it's good or bad, it's up to it's like it's your personal thing so yeah yeah it's subjective um so i'm I'm my own biggest critic you guys come here and you you love my paintings and stuff like that and jonesy wants to take film film the yard and that later and i'm like oh i don't know because i'm it's a bit messy i'm a bit ocd about mess and that and he'll tell you that um (laughs) and i'm thinking oh my paintings aren't really finished i don't really want them filmed yet because that's just me as a person but when, when I started getting that balance and started jumping in the yard and getting busy, and it's something I remember Wayne Bennett telling us when we're going through the whole... Um, when, in 2014, when Alex uh, hurt himself, we were all very... Um, I suppose it took us back. We were very, um, you know, we were almost grieving in a way. Like, we are all very upset because he's... That's, that's he, Alex McKinnon, isn't it? Yeah, Newcastle yeah. player. So he's, he, was very cl- he was a very big part of our team. We are all very close to him. And I remember Wayne just saying... Um, because you could just see it in us, you know, we we're all down and out and, um, you know, really, really down because we we're feeling for him and that. And he was just saying, you know, no matter what happens in the couple next couple of weeks, he's in the best hands whatsoever. And just make sure you keep him busy around your house and, and at home and not reading too many papers and just getting on with life really and not getting on with life in the sense of forgetting about it, but just like make sure you got that balance um, mentally. So I remember that and that sort of stuck in my head when I started um, going for a bit last year. And that's why I just got busy, just got busy. And you, you, like you say, you get into the middle of a game and you just the world disappears. I could start a painting three hours later, I'm still going and I don't know where that time's gone, but I had such a joyful time doing so. Or digging, I know like there was a few boys comment on me digging up the yard last year during the year. And then I'm digging holes. Digging holes. But I took, I took pride in it because I knew that digging a hole meant it was going to look beautiful at the end of... Um, my yard was going to look beautiful at the end of it. And although it looks messy and my, the OCD side of me came out because I was frustrated going to bed. I couldn't finish everything in a day. You just want to finish everything in a day. You always want to... Whenever I get work, I just think, i just got to finish it now, here and now. And um, that's why I was saying with you recently, you know, you want your, your... You just bought... Stevie Ward just bought a new... Um, property and he's started pulling we, we went around to start pulling the carpets up yesterday he goes yeah but i want the wall knocked down this in, week and painted this week yeah. and it, it takes a bit more than that and so i just got busy and obviously the end result's great for me it's never end, ending but um uh there's just that there's a, that uh when the boys come around you, you pass comments and you know you you see those um all that hard work's gone into it um has, has paid off it's uh it's really you know uplifting I like I like I like the idea when you said um, about keeping busy and, and and actually practically doing something, and when you're talking about the social media aspect of it, and um, you can go on a loop, you, Jonesy, you may you may need enlightening on this, but you can go on your phone and you can pick up Instagram, check all your personal notifications, and then spend good time getting lost on it, so you forget about everything going on around you. And you just, I suppose it's just like a little window of, you know, judgment, um, self-gratification, you know, all sorts of stuff. And then you'll load up Snapchat, then you load up Twitter, and then you'll, you'll, you you can, you know, you can in effect waste a lot of time doing it. And a, a physical metaphor, metaphor of that was just me earlier. I was I was going towards car, um, get some carpets checked out for my new house. 
And for some reason, I stopped in the car and just loaded up Instagram. And five minutes later, I thought, "What am I doing?" You know, this is this is what you this is what you were you were probably were understanding. But I got on Instagram and just like as a bit of a I don't know break from getting out of the car to go to look at carpets. I thought, "Oh, I'll check out Instagram, and see what was going on." Where there's no real need to do it, and I think that's probably the difference with you. You know, you're very busy. You're always doing stuff, but. You know that's that's procrastination just completely that and that that's that's the downside to social media i think um i don't know what your days look like without it you know do you, is there anything that you well, procrastinate I, with or well first of all i just want to get things done so i'm like anybody whether it be a painting i'll touch on that in a second because cuthbo said something really important there about the things that you do when time flies that's what you were created to do when you love something like that and time disappears for me it can be taking my car bits I, I've got a T5 transporter, as you know, 230,000 miles up clock. And all I do when I've got a day off is take it to bits, put it back together again. Yeah. All right, sounds stupid, but I learn so much from it. Um, but that, 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 what you're talking about there is getting mixed up with, with social media. And social media, listen, I ate a bag, it, there's some great things about it, but those walls that you need doing and those bits of work that you need doing in the house, you know, that time, the hours that you're wasting, or not wasting, but spending there, replacing. Now, for me, what I do, now I started doing as I've got older, is I started to write things down as a bit of a plan. So I told you the other day, I've got a big whiteboard in my bedroom and I carry it around my house. And then I, I write stuff down at the beginning of the day, I think this is what I need to get done by the end of this day. And if I get these five jobs done and I get these four jobs done on Tuesday and then these four jobs on Wednesday by two week Monday, this is what I'll have. Yeah. And it's just a plan and a process. And I, I've got four boys, I've got a lovely wife who's, my wife's unbelievable, she flip, she sorts everything out for me. Um, like she's just ace, she's like my best mate. I mean, but we have, she's so funny as well, she just hammers me, I walk through the door and she abuses me. Like she's proper banter, she's ace. Yeah. Um, so I'm fortunate with that. But yeah, you've got to, you've got to, if you want to achieve stuff, I mean, some people like sitting about and chilling out and just minting on, on social media, which is, which is fine. Uh, I ain't going to judge that. Just going back to what Cuffball said, um, I believe we're all created in God's image. We're all different. Um, we've all got different talents and abilities, right? And um, one of the first challenges is to find out what that is, and that's usually something you love doing. So Cuffball, that would be a painting for somebody like Ryan Orr, be sat with his Diablo or Jubik's Cube or doing Pythagoras. Do you know what I mean? Uh, other lads, it might be music, uh, or creative music. Alex Simmons, mate, I spend a lot of time with now. He loves his music. Um, go do it and go share that with the world. So I, I always uh, say that the reason why Leeds Rhinos has been successful is because we've got a really diverse group of different players and talents with abilities. Rob Burrow's like a little midget, a big flipping uh, warrior like Jamie Peacock, or a Kylo like super strong, or yourself. They're all, if you look around our changing rooms, you can pinpoint one thing that each person's good at. But what they do is they bring that gift, that talent, ability to the to the to the core, to the whole, and it's called altruism, giving what you've got for your mate, serving your mate. And when you're all doing that, instead of doing using your gift for yourself like a villain would, um, you're using it for like a superhero, yeah. you know, with with real humility. Um, and I think if the world does that, forget about the plan. The plan isn't as important as the people that buy into it. Like you can have any plan, uh, but once everybody's bought, everybody's bought into a vision, an idea, a plan, whatever it is in distance, we're all pushing that way and giving our own little bit of chipping in here and there. You can achieve whatever you want. Yeah. I always use uh, my favourite Bible parts is when uh, Tower of Babel, when um, when human beings, it's actually a bad, bad part. They're all building towers to try and be great like God. And God comes down and says, uh, you know, these human beings, if they're all doing this, paraphrasing here, there's no they can't achieve. And it and it's true. You know, there's no not that you do it against against God. I'm Christian and God comes at the the top of my list for everything. Um but then when you realise that you are here created um to to use your gifts and talents, then go find out what that is and do it. And just lastly, funny because when Cuffpo mentioned his, uh, his animals, brilliant. I've got a dog and uh, there's I read an article about a guy who's had all his life spent in prison, drugs, all kinds of problems, and he, he found chickens. And these chickens, right, I've had chickens, I know how good they are, but it's completely changed his life. It's given him an absolute purpose. Yeah. And um, one of the first passages, you all know this, in the Bible again, so I'm, I'm no apologies for thinking. God says, it's not good for man to be alone. Go into the garden and find a helper. And the first thing he does is goes around animals, and he'll find some sort of affinity with an animal. But then, uh, the animal doesn't quite fulfil it, and then obviously create women and uh, bomb procreation. What the best things? Just on that, I think um, for people listening in that, they always, for myself, I used to be like this. I used to be like, well, he's he's got that talent, and um, 
and they've got the ability to play rugby and that. I don't, I don't think it's so much about having it. I think it's just getting started and trying. Trial yeah. and error is the biggest thing. Yeah. I, I'm not, by any means, um, I don't I don't have any certificates or anything in doing um, landscaping. That I went out and did a bit of work experience with um, my next door neighbour and took a lot of interest in it. Done a lot of googling, etc. Learned did learnt by study really and by things I picked up off my um, my grandparents and my uh, mother and auntie growing up about their love of gardening, but. By no, no means whatsoever was I an expert or knew a lot about it. I had to fit, like, I love, if you look around my yard, I've got all, like, tropical plants. Like, I've got palms, I've got um, yuccas, a lot of desert plants and that. But I, I, I didn't put them in and just hope by luck that I'd survive. I had to go and research it and figure it out and figure out what would survive north of England. Because, obviously, you know, it gets cold up here during winter and I can't just have plants sitting out all, all year round. Um, so that all just came by a trial and error. And my point to this is, just get started. Yeah. Just throw yourself in the deep end. You just got to... I think the more you um, hesitate to throw yourself in the deep end and and, um, and go, oh, well, I don't know, I don't know. If you procrastinate that much, then you'll just never figure it out and you'll just get back in this cycle of of what you don't like doing or... You know, so just just get out there and have a crack. How do you know what you want where? Because you got there and it's brilliant. And I think, oh, what made him think about putting this bush at the end of this row of uh, upright railway sleepers? Or why, why have you got this sort of old retro piece of, um, what's the word when you've got the reclamation sort? You've got a bit of a reclamation theme in there, restoration. Uh, how how do, you, do you feel what you want when you, when you see it? It's, yeah, it's sort of like, uh, everything sort of falls into place for me. I don't really... I, you know what? I planned this backyard about 2,200 times. Right. I've drawn it down. I, I drew it down a, a few times. But in my head, I started and when I finished, like I started with the, the base, like this basic thing was the deck, right? So that was that was the, the structure of what I wanted to go off. So I just knew, I, I got the guy out, we measured it up. We, um, we put that in place. But all the sleepers and that, they weren't there. That was a different different story when I started putting the deck in. So it's just, like I said, get got started. And then you sort of the vision sort of opens up a bit more and um, you realise by trial and error, oh, maybe that won't look so good there. Um, so yeah, it was just sort of, uh, like I said, getting started, putting the deck in and then just evolving from that. Like I didn't originally have a beach at the front. You know, I put the sand <laughs> in. It's got a beach, yeah. Yeah, it's got a I put, beach. I put, I put a sitting area in, right, for, um, for, it sits probably about 10 people. And you know what? I was, um, it was completely, it was comp the yard was completely different to a few of the boys mentioned coming to my house for Mad Monday. And I thought, right, how can I, how can I create an, a vibe and atmosphere to, uh, to, to have every round, feel comfortable, have something a bit closer to home for me. So I went out, did some research on sand and what type of sands you can get up here. And um, just to and explain what Mad Monday is to us rugby players. <laughs> it's just a it's just a time where we can all get together as a group of blokes after a long fought year like last year and just unwind a bit. Yeah. Have a just few drinks. A bit, yeah. yeah, just unwind a bit and have a few drinks together. And you know it was class at the end of you having everyone around. I was I was a bit nervous. I I did everything in the yard by the end of the year to get everyone over and have a good day with them. By the time everyone got over, I was stressed that I hadn't finished everything out and nothing's finished with me in my head. And then, um, yeah, at the end of the day, it really, really paid dividends because I had a great, great little um, day, two days with the boys. And so, like you mentioned, good. you mentioned being stressed there. That reminds me of a video you put me onto Jonesy with the oxytocin. Is it the oxytocin that's released in your brain when you're feeling stressed? But it's a signal to yourself where right you've got to do something here so i'm just thinking that in terms of his, his garden um you know you, you've get panicking all oh, boys are coming around coming around but now you've been left with a beach in your back garden and it was a it was an awesome mad monday wasn't it to be yeah. fair well i wasn't I wasn't panicking it's just Have like got right that oxytocin is that right the o yeah the, o o the oxytocin is a, i think it was a stress hormone i think it's something yeah. to do with what women get when they're in childbirth to be fair. but 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 no it's, it's right so it's a stress hormone and the, <laughs> the conventional thinking was that stress yeah, was bad for you and, uh, and killed you but stress only kills you if you think it's bad for you yeah. they did a big experiment and out of the people who died of stress related illnesses only the people that ticked the box that said stress is bad for you were the ones that died anybody who thought stress 
wasn't bad for you. They didn't die of stress-related illnesses. So it's a bit like stressing your body when you're doing a bench press. If you want to get stronger, you've got to stress your muscles to a degree incrementally and in, increase the gains. Uh, we've all, we're all like, pay, uh, I was thinking about dinner plates. Some people have got a big dinner plate, can eat a big dinner. Some people can't, they, they can only have a little job on. But some of those people with little jobs on do that one job better than people with big dinner plates and loads of jobs on. Um, so yeah, 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 oxytocin, but... What does it? What I wanted, I wanted to un, understand uh, now, Cuffer. What does your garden give back to you now? What What do you take from your garden? Is it, is it a calming thing? Is it something you look forward to being in that environment, that space when you get back in a on a stressful day? Yeah, well, I haven't obviously I haven't used it much um, during the winter because of, it's not really something for outdoors. And that was the other thing that started creeping my head. How can I make this for winter as well? Can I put up like a cabana and put some heating through it and that? But no, um, really, um, jacuzzi um, helped me out last year to get a um, jacuzzi. So, obviously, you can't see it right now, but I've got a jacuzzi in the backyard as well, which um, I've, I've put in for that relaxation side of things and um, just to unwind at the end of the day or if I've got injuries or if Wardy feels like coming over and <laughs> laying it in, in. slopping in it to get he, help his um, injuries, <laughs> take a bit of weight off the legs. Oh. Um, but yeah, it's like that. It's like for me, when I did it, it was more more so to create like a um, a sort of a atmosphere and vibe that you know I would have had back home. So that was that was m- what I was trying to achieve originally. To kind of open your own business in garden design, do you not? Do you not reckon? I've got a. I've Are we <laughs> launching an Adam Cumberson design, <laughs> garden design here? I've heard a few people say it. Like I know um, Brad Singleton's very keen on me getting around and helping out with his yard, and I'd, you know I'd love to do it. But, um, but see, this this is this is a <laughs> this is something that keeps popping up to me. I, I've heard a quote saying that you should never start your own business in, unless someone's asking you for a service or something that that you can offer. Well, I've had and, yourself, haven't I, as well? And I, I've asked you many times. Jones is infatuated by it all. Singo is asking. He he definitely wants it for free, but do you know what I mean? That's and I and I and in, in all honesty, I'd pay Cuffbow to like you said, Jones. You don't know where everything goes. Sometimes you just need a bit of expertise, but you've learned that expertise by just going and doing it. Mm. So it's I'll just go- it's just a fear of me going and doing it and it looking. So I'd entrust you to make my garden look good. I was fortunate enough to, and I say I do a lot of study when I come over here because I was for, uh, fortunate enough to have a property back home that it's done. I did um, a lot of uh, renovation, outdoor renovations um, back home, um, which was really my main scope. Like I sort of trialed and error a lot there. When I come over here, all the study into it was because of the climate change and that um, when I got over here. So, um, yeah, I'd love to get into it, but you got to understand, first and foremost, I want to be successful as a rugby player. And last year I put a lot of, lot of um, back-breaking work, I suppose, into my yard and probably lost a bit. I didn't lose a bit on the field because of that. Let's get that... Um, let's well, get that straight. You're saying it'd be a premium. It'd have to be a premium Adam Cuthbertson offer because you don't do many of them. That's what you're saying. I'd just, I'd just, I'd just like you know. You could expect me to come in and do the whole thing. Mm. You do all Jones. You do all the labouring. I do all the boys. I, I do all the boys. I've offered to dig holes. I just never get time to go into his garden <laughs> and dig holes. You think somebody like uh, Brad Singler and have all the energy? Well, and, I, the and thing to, is that with these, with these, um, these landscapes around, you just don't know what's in the yard. Yeah, you can be digging and you could find something that I want to like find. A, like a bomb. You never tell me about True. it. Like a bomb. Like, I read a lady found a grenade in her yard the other week when she was doing renos. That's not what you want, is it? No. Nah. <laughs> it's better things to find than a grenade, isn't there? She ever having to dig all though if it goes off. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, very true, very true. What else have you got on your plan, Wardy? We've got what else do I want to discuss? Um, I just think uh, another thing to chat about is is the ideology around sport, um, role models, and hindsight. And I remember texting you, Jones. Actually, I was looking through my notes the other other day, um, and for some reason I stumbled across it. For some reason, I I I picked a moment in 2016. I think it was the summer of 2016 where I'd wrote a list down because I think, and me and Cuff were chatting about before, um, you kind of collect moments that inspire you along the way. You know, so many different people, so many different moments. Um, and I'd wrote down on a list, Cuff, but I don't know if I told you this yet. I sent Jonesy, I texted him, um, and I looked over my notes and I seen it. It was top five people that inspired me this year in 2016. Um, there was Kendrick Lamar, there was Kanye West, there was Tim Ferriss, Tony Robbins, and JJB. 
written in my notes. <laughs> just just there. <laughs> and Tony he was Robbins. he was around the middle. If there's no certain order, you know, Tony Robbins, yeah. yeah. I touched it. Yeah, that's yeah. And Adam Cuffman's in there as well. Um, Don't make sixth. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just MVP I'm just, sixth man. What what I found really interesting, I told John as well, I texted him and I said, Look at this, what I found from twenty sixteen when I was running all over the shop, launching mentality, doing all this different stuff. Um, but a reason for why that I found Jones is so inspiring and along with those other people is I guess it's just breaking down the barriers of um, of what you perceive to be fear do you know and one massive thing was obviously me saying I'd been depressed in 2014 and I was running about um, doing all this different stuff in rugby and coming back from injuries and, and doing rehab and stuff and, and I guess an ongoing inspiration was you Jonesy alongside those other guys but in my head i'm just wondering for what you boys you know what what are your inspirations what are your the people that have stood out to you what what are the moments that have inspired you and how can you how can you convert or qualify that to to the people listening there you go interesting to sort it right back to when i was a kid for me it was all about the intent so the intent was the goal where I, and where i wanted to be uh, for me it was all about winning that's all, it, that's all it was about. So that, that, that can take the context of playing in a game of rugby league, can be playing Monopoly, um, it can be uh, cooking a meal. On a, Everything that I do, I wanted to be best at it. Because when I was a young kid, I quickly realised that winning was a great way of making friends through sport, on the vehicle of sport. Uh, and for me, I ended up down the path for rugby league. could have been any sport. Uh, but I was quite big, strong, athletic. And uh, I used to, I was, you know, I was gifted in that guess. And when I was up 14, 15, I was winning... I'd won a lot of games between Megan Spoon and the rest of the three year olds to be a fifteen year old. Obviously every then everybody catches you up and you start to play with better people and you stop being as good as you were. You've got to find different ways then and uh and and, and be diversified. I've just seen a, a talk that JP did without stealing his thunder. But he went through his career and talked about how he was a great try scorer at the beginning of his career. Then he went on to being an offloader and then he went on to be a grafter. Uh, and then he went on to start passing in his game, putting plays on, and he showed the stats and how the stats changed, and he changed as he grew up. Now, for me, that was all about the win, but it come almost idolatrous. Uh, the most important part of my life, and again, I'll mention it again, I let our TT come, took me to church, become a Christian, uh, put Jesus, God, right at the top of everything, because I thought everything in life's in tropics, so or if I win a medal or you earn loads of money, uh, at the end of it, it all it all dies, it all degrades, it all goes away. It's actually worthless. It's meaningless. So the real value in in winning in trophies is seeing the pictures of the people and the faces of the people that I did it with. Because I look back and I look at Cuffboy yourself or, or Zach Hardaker in in forty years time and think, you know what? I know what they gave for this group at that particular time, and they inspired me for whatever reason. And that's what always sticks with you. Uh, for me, though, God is treasure in heaven. So everything I do now, it's about relationships and try to build that treasure in heaven, try to be the right person for the fellow man, if you like. Um, and in my earthly life then, with that at the centre, it's all about my kids. So legacy is the number one. So I'm thinking, what's the point in achieving all this and uh, going on this, this journey of life that is a narrative, it is a story, if I can't pass that on to my kids, for that next generation, you've got, to have a, you've got to have a bit of a legacy. So then, my family is born out of out of that. So I'm a wedding ring there. I've got in Christ Jesus written in our make. So when I get out of bed every day, you're going out to be the best version of myself, and uh, doing that to serve my family, friends, my uh, colleagues, and and just crack on. That that's where I'm at at the minute. That's where my mind's at. Yeah. Did you? Because obviously, over these last few years, I've found that. Um, as a young lad, you're looking for what, you know, I think there's a bit of a theory on this and I think ever since we started going to school as an, as an individual, we'll be in reception and then the next thing is we'll be looking forward to going to year one. The The thing after that is year six to be the top end of that school. Then the next one is that to go in high school. You work all the way through high school and then you're doing your A-levels or you're going to college and then you've got to graduate to go to uni. And then I think there's a bit where you're going through uni, you've got all this practical guidance and stuff that you're going to do next. And then there's a time where you go into the big wide world and there's no real, there's no real schedule for, for what you've got to do or what destination you arrive at. And I think that may be a reason for why people can struggle. I want to, I want to do a bit more reading into that and, and, and 
and a bit more sussing that out. But do you know that that's one thing that I found where people may sh- may have something that they're not thinking about. You know, so as a rugby player, my thing was always to get my levels. It was always to to win a medal. It was always to win a trophy. I, you know, fantastic. I ticked them off really early. Um, but what I've had to change is my mindset for for what I'm striving for. Um, and you mentioned it there, the medals and, and and everything that is is meaningless. So now, rather than treating a Monday morning as as just something that's going to get me to a Friday to play to possibly win to get to a grand final, I go in on a Monday morning. I'm bouncing because I'm with all the boys. You know, it could be one of the best times of your life. Just going in there and Monday. Monday morning, seeing Cuthbo, seeing Jones, seeing some of the boys, some of the young lads coming through, echoing what I will like when I'm coming through, you know, so I'm, I'm bouncing, I'm, I'm loving it every moment, you know, and, and you're flowing through it and, and, and everything's going well. That's even with an injury, I might add, because I used to be a depressed man when I was injured, do you know what I mean? I used to be really down, I used to come in and, and I didn't really get the idea of a mindset towards how to, how to be content but still striving, you know, I don't... I'd be striving first before before I content. That was my goal, um, and I think you just mentioned there how, how how your purpose is a bit wider and a bit broader. You know, you're gonna leave a legacy for your kids, but there's no real external massive goal. You're just doing what you're doing. Yeah, because I, I don't believe this life lasts forever. It don't last forever. We know mm. that one in one people die. Yeah, there's uh, only one guy I found in in Bible that was was uh, live forever, and that's where I'm sort of investing in in more of an eternal life than than that now. And so I don't have to be content in anything now. Everything's meaningless, good or bad. It doesn't really matter. But that and listen, it ain't some magic where I don't ever feel pain or sorrow. Or, and the reason why young people in particular really struggle and don't know is because you're not there yet. You haven't, you haven't experienced it. So in my own mind, knowledge is what you read, what you've been told, all right? So what you learn on telly, what you listen to a podcast. That's knowledge. Um, then you've got to go get the experience. Cuffbo nailed it earlier. When you're a kid, you look up to everybody else and think, oh, they've got it all. But you've got to actually experience it and think, actually, it doesn't quite marry up to the knowledge, what I expected. Knowledge plus experience equals wisdom, right? And until you've got the both, you can't have that wisdom. So the experiential side and the and knowledge. A Jewish guy put it like this, and he's it, got something in it. I don't hang off it. I won't, uh, in, I won't uh, advise anybody else to. But he, he said human beings are a bit like uh, the old Swiss dolls, Russian dolls, Russian dolls. So they're all inside each other. Pop, 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 pop. And the first Russian doll, when, you, when you're born, you obviously you're just going to find your feet and realise where you are, where you've been born, where you live, what society you're in, what culture, what paradigm. Uh, and then as you get older, you start to get teens, to your teens. It's all about sex, food and shelter, right? And I, whatever that pops up into your mind, you'll understand that when you start getting into your teens, you start thinking about partners, you start thinking about where you're going to live, how you're going to be an adult, uh, how your belly's going to get fed, because we all like eating when we're teenagers, pizza and all the wrong, wrong stuff, and shelter. When you've consumed all that and realised, you know what, that's not quite satisfying me, it's not giving me that contentment that you're talking about, then it turns into wealth. You're after chasing wealth, and I don't mean loads of money, I mean the ability to have the first bit, the sex, food and shelter, on tap. So you think, right, I need my own house, I need to get a job, what job am I going to do, what career am I going to go on, who am I going to marry, what sort of kids am I going to have, what's my life going to look like, what's everybody going to think of me on Instagram, Twitter, blah, blah, blah. So you've got sex food shelter, and then pops out of this Swiss doll, and then all of a sudden you've got, you want wealth. And then when you realise that the wealth ain't good enough, you've got everything that you always wanted, and that ain't quite settling you down either, you turn into power, all right? And you think, right then, I want power, and the power is to manipulate everybody else around you. So every your mate who you grew up with, Dom, let's say he's Dom, he's got set food shelter and wealth, and now you want power. So you want to get with Dom, and you want to start being a cooperative power, if you like, start influencing other people. Mm-hmm. When you get that in your corporate body, you think this isn't quite filling the gap either. Right then, I need knowledge. I need to find out more knowledge. And you go out right and get all these gurus and all the lead it, and this bloke from five hundred years ago, blah, blah, blah. and then at the end of it, you don't quite get that, and you end up dying. Right, and the, the point is. That are you mapping out my life? I'm, ma- I'm mapping. Well, no, I'm, and, and a lot of people are bit translate that because yeah. <laughs> do you know what translates through all of it? The only thing you need, it's a bit of a Beatles song. All you need is love, yeah. right? Through all of it. Yeah. So all you need is to love the people, and the Greek have got five different words for love as well. English, we're a bit lazy. We, we love a kebab. I love Stevie Ward. I love playing rugby. I 
I love my wife. They're all very different. Yeah. Uh, we're comrades, uh, friends that, that that sort of love. Me and my wife, are, uh, I think it's called Eros in it. It's that physical love. I love my kids in a different way where you go and jump in front of your car for your kids and, and all that kind of thing. It's all different. Uh, but what you find is once you're just content with what you've got in the world and where you are, all you have to do is love the people around you and love the old, the creator of being at longest. Mate, it's, it's all sorted. I think that's where we uh, we get caught up in too much. And me and Stevie over one of our emotional coffee sessions the other day, we were panicking about our lives. <laughs> yeah. Actually, spoke about it. We did. I sat there and I said, Stevie, I'm 32 now. I've got all I wanted to do was be a professional sportsman. Well, I, I I loved every sport I watched. I was inspired by most people. So all I want to do is get out of school. This is a funny thing. I wanted to get out of school so bad so I could do all this. <laughs> got out of school, realized I love school. I miss yeah, being with yeah, my friends yeah. every day and like just having that moment. But now it's all gone and I can't go back there unless I want to look like a weirdo. So I've, I've left school and all I want to do is become a professional sportsman. Finally became a professional sportsman. Amazing um, start to, you know, a goal and um, a lifelong achieve. Then I thought, you know what? All I want to do is own a house, own a house. Then I thought, you know what? I want two houses. So yeah. you just keep, it's just never ending. And I think you got to, you just got to realize at one point, you know, um, I suppose what is really important. Because after all that, after all said and done, after you've achieved those goals, you still search, you still find yourself searching. No yeah. matter what um, realm of life you come from, you could be like, you know, you completely different job whatsoever to us or have completely different. Um, um, aspirations to be anything in life but you're going to keep searching unless you're happy with what you've got absolutely and and can realize that sometimes it's not about having more but um, respecting and, and, and loving more of um, what you've got here and now and I think that's something people continue to forget like I continue to forget like I'm on the way home from training sometimes I'm going I need to go shopping for stuff no I don't no I don't I've got that much crap around my house like I just need to I just need to like use what I've got more and love what I've got more and, and get more involved with what I've got I don't need to go home base for another bag of dirt and another plant yeah. although I do but you yeah. know I don't I don't yeah. really and I'm not it's not gonna incessant need yeah 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 and, and you say people that um, tend to inspire us I've, I used to go, I used to, I used to search for that inspiration, you know, um, and I'll probably do to an extent sometimes now when, you know, you're having one of those days, but I used to search a lot for inspiration, but now I sort of, there's only, there's only, I suppose my grandfather's been a big in, um, inspiration in my life. Um, probably the biggest one I can, can literally sit back and say he was an inspiration. You know, you ask for that person that, that you, um, you wanted to grow up and be or, um, you know, like an athlete or whatnot. I haven't really had one of them. I've had a, I've had a couple that I've been inspired by, but I've always tend to move on from it. But um, yeah, I suppose my grandfather's probably the biggest inspiration. Mm, yeah, I, I, th I think there's a difference between filling your time and enjoying it, and actually searching for that. That you know, it's a bit of Alan Watts. I listen to a lot of Alan Watts. who was a bit of a philosopher from sixties, seventies era, and he brings like Eastern philosophies over to to the western side of things and he and he just talks people through it but you know there's a bit of a difference between filling your time with stuff you enjoy doing with contentment and then also having an incessant need to do something and, and search for something that'll they'll fill that spot you know and and there's been a lot done it i think there's netflix minimalist you know and, and i just watched um prescription thugs on on netflix and and he and he's talking about the ideas behind prescription drugs and 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 why people use them, but I think it's it's a lot like a an addiction culture, and I think it's just filling that instant gratification, Jonesy. I know you talk about that quite a lot, and that's social media. That's that immediate dopamine hit. Um, but I look back at at my short career. I'm 23. Um, the last few years, um, and the reasons that that you know, depression may have raised its head and, you know, a bit of anxiety is because I think underneath everything that was going on, I was still thinking, you know, what's what's going on here? Why, you know, I'm winning stuff and, you know, I'm, I'm at Leeds Rhinos, I'm doing what I've always wanted to do. But there was still that unease and discontent and I think that's probably a reason why, which which is why I want to launch this podcast to, to speak to different people and get their different views and, and kind of and give more of a message rather than just... Um, 
mental health you need to talk about it or you know it's something a bit deeper exploring the cultures around it and for what what may cause it and and a lot of those eastern philosophies that have actually helped me and there's there's a player in our team Anthony Mullally and he's right into it he's, he's a vegetarian you know we all we all riff him and stuff but I think he's looking at you know looking at that side of things and thinking you know there's a bit of weight behind this and and, and all, it, all it is is just basically being happy with what, what you're doing and and there's no answer out there it's, it's right here do you know what I mean it's right here sitting you know speaking to you guys and, and enjoying it and that's and that's all there is to it I guess. he has a lot of faith in what he does though that's the thing at first you know Anthony he's a, he's a great character of our team and he um, when he first started I thought it was all just a bit of a laugh like I thought yeah right look at the sizes he's 6 foot yeah. 5 and about 120 kilos I thought maybe he went through a bit last year he's looking for a spiritual like um, guidance or something but then he was he, he was so infatuated with it and believed in it so much and had so much faith in it it's really turned him around as a person as a player like I can genuinely say like he's, I can see he's changed so much in the last year mm-hmm. or so and it's he wasn't looking for he wasn't looking for something to inspire him outside he was he's trying to become inspiration like inspirational yeah. I think that's that's a really big thing for um, young kids these days and even adults because you know I'm an adult now I don't have anything figured out really I'm just going with the flow um, but that's that's a big thing for people is not continuously looking for this inspiration elsewhere just find something you love and do it with all your heart and then yep. you become an inspiration don't you yep. yeah what, so, um, go on sorry John no 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 it's, just, it's all true it's, uh, and, and this is why I love being in a changing room environment because you see all these different parts of different people I just love people mate. I just like enjoying assimilating the, the qualities that I really enjoy whether it be Cuffball's garden uh, Reinhold's ability to learn stuff like that or Mull's adventure in him um, I, I think one thing we probably not mentioned that's quite important is this, is the ego. I think you mentioned it earlier, Cuff. When you, I think there's some evidence in there when you're about 18 month old and you realise when you look at mirror there's someone on you. You know that's you until you're 18 month old. You don't know that's you. You're not quite aware that you're an individual being. And particularly social media, it's like an avatar uh, for you. It's what the rest of the world perception is reality. What the rest of the world thinks of you. So this thing as well, getting rid of the ego. Um, is massive because uh, an old friend of mine, Clive Gott, motivational speaker, who brilliant, bless him, he's, he's died now, died a few years back, big Leeds fan. He used to say um, the difference between self image, uh, the self image, and. What was the other thing, huh? Clive Gott, a legend there. Do you remember him? Yeah, he, he came and spoke to Academy a few times. Was it is it heart heart disease he died of? Yeah, I don't know. That's like fifty two. Uh, oh, that's it. He was a legend. He was very inspirational, Cuffball. Uh, but Jones is just trying to think of the. He's basically talking about um, self image being the 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 perception that you think everybody else thinks of you, mm. right? So I'm sat here worrying about what Stevie Ward and Adam Cuthbertson think of me. Yeah. All right, and then there's what I think of myself. And a lot of what I think of myself is based on what you two people think of me. Now, as yeah. Cuffball mentioned earlier, we've all got completely the wrong perception of everybody because we don't spend all our working hours and time with that person understanding what they're going through. We might use the example of somebody driving past in a, a Range Rover. Yeah. All right? So when you can get over this battle of, of worrying about what other people are thinking about you or what you're wearing and just push that ego aside and just keep giving yourself... Mate, life's a million times harder. Yeah. And I remember, whether it being a, a, a team meeting, speaking, speaking in front of a room, I still get nervous now if I've got to go talk. But I think, do you know what? This is going to be a learning experience and I'm going to learn something new. And some of the best moments have been in those times when I've gone to speak to a room and nobody's listening or they just start talking on the top. I've had some great experiences. I remember one we were at Doncaster <laughs> and uh, for whatever reason, they put me in front of a room. They like Phoenix Club, mate. You know what I mean? They like Peter Kay. Yeah. Full of like a working men's club with about 150 people in, and there was about three Leeds Rhinos fans who thought that this event had wanted to happen. Yeah. And I'm speaking like I normally do, and not a person in this club's listening. So I thought, I've come here to do a job, right, and get to the end of it. I'm going to get to the end of it. And the end of it, this woman came up to me and went, uh, You're better than me. There's no way I could have talked, carried on talking when <laughs> nobody's listening. Yeah, yeah. Like that. That's yeah. how people think, though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what people think. And I, and I just thought, I ain't bothered. I'm just mm. going to do what I come to do. And if they don't like it, and I can't control that. Yeah, it's yeah. like people who don't like Chinese food, 
right? That's fine if you don't yeah. like Chinese food. Don't mean a billion Chinese people are wrong, does it? <laughs> yeah. uh, that's just your perception. Yeah. But if yeah. I was to go cook some Chinese food and give you a poor example of it, yeah, yeah, then yeah, yeah, then yeah. that's wrong because I've given you a poor example. So for me, it's not whether you two like what I'm going to say. My only concern is that if what I'm going to say is accurate yeah. and correct and why I intend it to be said. Yeah. If I give you wrong information, then that, that's bad. I've let myself down. If you don't like it, I'm not. I'm not as fussed. And you've you've shared that with me a few times actually. When yeah. when I've said, oh, I don't know about doing this for like a rugby AM or a Ryan's TV, you're like, don't worry about it, mate. Just do your own thing, and then you know it's golden either way. It's just where some people are going to like it, some people aren't. Yeah, That's you can't thing, please you know? everyone. Can no, you? you can't. It's impossible to please everyone, isn't it? I, uh, it took me a long time to realise that, you know, because mm. I went through the beginning of my career like. It was, it, was a, it was an old man's club in a real coming when I came through the ranks. And I, I went through um, went through turning up the training, worried about you know what was the next thing I was going to get picked on every day about. And a lot of young kids did. You, know, we, you went through it and you had to go through the hard times until you made it really, and then you sort of they eased off a bit. But um, you know, I think at the age of twenty, I had a nose ring, but and I used to cop it a bit, <laughs> and then I used to, but uh, no, well, I the, the part of the story is I used to worry about going in, being myself. Bit di- I'm a weirdo anyway. Let's get it straight. I am a weirdo. I'm not your. I'm not your your normal um, sort of rugby league sort of character. I suppose you can say. Um, but I used to go in worried about what everyone else would think. You know, I get come around again ten years later, and I've got exact same thing. But I couldn't give a toss what anyone thought because it's just me, and I enjoy being me, and that's what makes me happiest. I know the other day um, when it was my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> a, a, a little uh, little something Rob threw in and I know Rob didn't mean it he's just always about the bands um, Rob Burrow but he said alright you're a bit old now time to get rid of nose ring like, just pretty much tell me to grow, grow up yeah. and I was like it didn't even like it didn't even hit home or anything about it I just laughed like and just carried belief, on yeah. but like that's the difference between growing up and realising and, and people can realise this at that age I was it's just a matter of believing it and just like you know yeah loving who you are at the time um but yeah you go through that you go through that phase in life and then when you come out the other side and you finally get it and you finally realize and you're comfortable in your own skin yeah the world's so much better place so much more better place and you you're not always going to be comfortable in your own skin like but to a degree if you are then you know <laughs> it's a lot better place it's st- i think with the ego it stems from um old cavemen survival instincts you know and, and i think in this generation we probably took it too far because you know rather than being safe by not walking in front of a car or putting your hand in a fire we've took it too far and, and if someone has a pop at you or has a shot at you your ego says oh god that, we don't want to do that again that, that didn't feel good so then you change how you act or you that I suppose that's confirmation you know that's conforming to to what everyone else wants to do and yeah, I know yeah, you yeah. spoke about that when, when you're just trying to fit in with people and you know you avoid you avoid the the fear you know it's, it's it, people you know really live in fear you should never fear and, being yourself should you yeah exactly you, you get crippled by fear um and that there's so many different versions of that you know that that's just being different or doing something a bit out there that's that people may just think what is he doing you know that that's the main reason behind it you don't want to upset other people's beliefs but and i think there's a, there's a winston churchill quote which i love and it says, when he, when you're 20 years old, you care what everyone thinks. When you're 40 years old, you um, you don't care what em- everyone thinks. When you're 60, you realise no one was even thinking about you at all. Yeah, there um, you go. That's and, it. And, it's, and, yeah. and I guess that's what we're kind of getting around to, talking about it. The earlier you get around that, I know it's harder with social media because you go back on your social media and you'll be crowdsourcing your self-esteem with how many likes you get. Um, whether it's had an impact on what you said and it's just a constant flood now that that quote may be outdated I'm not sure um, I don't know what you think to that Jonesy but um, it's to me it seems like the ones that 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 can get past that fear or know that fear consciously and act on it you know they're, they're the ones that can can make a difference or they're generally the ones that are successful. Yeah, yeah well, I mean you look at you look at people like Kanye West and this is I know I keep mentioning but He's one of those guys that is completely out there because he's out of touch with what other people say. You know, people think he's he's insane and he's he's crazy. He's getting noticed for doing it, but if you listen to a lot of his songs, you know, he mentions depression in in, um, one of his most popular songs. I think it's um, Click that he mentions it. 
but he, he talks about a lot of good stuff like a lot of what, like what we're mentioning and I think I think if you can consciously address that fear and think there's something stopping me doing what I'm doing here but no it's not actually going to that's actually going to kill you or do it severe. I think that's um, that's a big thing to learn and, and something that I've learned, especially with going through mentality, which is the scariest thing I've ever done. You know, I've been on a rugby league field for well over, over you know, most of my life now. Um, but the scariest thing I've ever done is talk about mental health openly and also put an online magazine out there where people can put content in. And I just opened myself up completely for judgment. You know, which is you know two there were two days where i put where i went to put that live put it in the program at magic weekend um the dark side of sport article and there's two days um i was like that's a big thing this what should i have done this you know is it is it different what's everyone gonna think Th- those i guess those are normal processes but i just told myself people need to speak about it you know in rugby league it's just completely silent you know i look at music and stuff and it's there and going back to my game and it's you know it's, it's it's barely even spoken about it's, it's not knocked around so well, I thought that, that weekend we both had a chance you know to write articles for that um for that magic weekend yeah and it was a big it was a big weekend wasn't it and so many people were going to say it so magic weekend just for for listeners that that may not be into rugby league or um being it, magic weekend is a is a fixture in newcastle and um, where all the rugby league teams go and play super league fixture and everyone's there out there everyone's there from all over, all over, you know, Britain and, and rugby league following um, places. Uh, but yeah, just give us what you're going to say. I was just going to say, I, I had this brilliant article that I had written up in my head, and I even wrote it down in my, um, my on in my computer, and didn't send it off because I was so concerned on on what I was writing and how people were going to, um, you know, read into it. And I really regretted that not getting that out there. Um, after seeing what you did because you would have gone through the exact same process but the difference was you just went stuff it yeah. just shoved it out there and let everyone make up their own mind on it and I <laughs> sat back and never got it out there and never got my opinion out there and it's, never got the story out there and you know had had you I seen like how successful yours was I was envious because I was like oh damn it no well like if I just if I just you know and Jonesy told me many a time when I was um, I even went in the office at one stage yep. looking for some help and that from the young kids in there with editing and that obviously you know my grandma would have needed a bit of help and that and that's probably the biggest thing I was worried about but um, if I just had it, got it done it could have been quite successful but we'll never know now mm. there's another chance you can do it the next one can't so guess. one of my mm. most nerve wracking moments was when Rugby was first ever on telly and I was uh, um, I was waiting for everybody's reaction there's, there's the Rugby M Twitter and obviously that's how they get a lot of the feedback, mm-hmm. Alex, and, and uh, a lot of it we got hammered. And again, it's a perception thing because people didn't know that we had no money and we didn't have any skills or abilities or rope. We didn't know what yeah. we were doing, yeah. just doing our best. And uh, I went to this last year, I think we've done, well, we've done hundreds of shows now, literally into hundreds, three triple figures. And uh, I went to one in England Internationals <laughs> last year and a bloke came up to me, there were about three of them. They were fans, rugby league fans, we were all right. And he went, did it kill you sitting behind that desk at Rugby M? I went, no way. He went, it killed us watching it. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, oh. Yeah. All legs just blown off. And, mate, I get hammered all the time. Did yeah. some stuff with BBC, a bit of commentary, and uh, I see little bits that get put out, and there's one guy's like, oh, yeah, I love this, but um, I'd like a lot less of JJB. And, all, and just get hammered. Yeah. And you think, what you think, if you were one bad comment, you think that that's the view of everybody yeah, yeah, yeah. and I'm awful at this, <laughs> this is rubbish. And it's probably not even a tiny minority. Mm. And it, it's like a bit like playing golf and you have that one good shot. You only have one person saying, do you know what? I see what you're trying to do there. It's not polished, it's not great, but you're having a dig and you will get better. And that, that anxiety goes. Uh, just leave you with this. Cuffball's giving back tonight. He's going to give uh, do some promo at an amateur club, North Leeds. Go on, North Leeds. <laughs> um, and I've got to go take my kids' train as well. But Jamie Peacock has got a, a tattoo on his back. Theodore Roosevelt, the man in the arena. Go look it up. Go Google it. And it's basically Theodore Roosevelt saying that if you stood outside the arena pointing the finger at the guy inside it and judging him, you haven't got the right to do that. You've got to get inside the arena, experience what he's going through, and then you'll probably find yourself saying, wow, I didn't know it was like this. Yeah. I ain't going to judge you now, mate. Yeah. Um, I'm going to get myself back out. And If you're willing to get in the arena, you've got the courage to get in the arena, um, you're doing well. 
if you stood outside just judging everybody who's in who's struggling who might not be doing the best um what grounds have you got to what do grounds it? have you got oh yeah. no and, and listen if you're in the arena getting hammered don't worry about it just crack on until they get in and they'll change your mind when they get in i don't mind taking criticism from you you said jones you know what you could have in a game think you should have done this and we do that we're pretty harsh with each other because as a group we want to go forward yeah. and we're always giving each other feedback and maybe not criticism um but you're in the arena so i can i can take it from you guys you understand where we're all at but you know, all the people are going, ah, oh, well, that was a lot of rubbish, that. Yeah. You don't know I me. Mean? Ashton Golden's two teeth have come out and he's broke mm. a finger and he's dropped a ball. You know what I mean? That, that's yeah. what happens when you yeah, play yeah. a game like us. So uh, just crack on. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. What do you reckon? We'll wrap that up, seeing as though the video record is just, just, just shot. Again, wrap it up, um, oh. Yeah, I reckon we'll wrap it up there. I think that's... We've got some good stuff there. Um, you have to... You have to you know, our, the MacBook style, isn't it? So your yeah, points weren't bring up. We've just been rambling on for a long time. Yeah, the, it, it, there was a bit of structure to that, but so I think right. I've, admit, it'll get better, and you'll learn the structures. You exactly, know. and that goes back to what you're saying, Jonesy. The first podcast we're doing, it's a bit of trial and error, yeah. and that's why it's good to have you guys because I don't know. I guess you, you met so. Um, but thanks for listening. If you've enjoyed it, um, take a look at mentalitymagazine.com and subscribe when you can and. Let us know. Give us some feedback, I guess. Um, we just spoke about being in the arena, but all constructive criticism is welcome. Um, and, and let us know what you want to hear, what you who you want to see on the podcast, and any different things which excites you, or if anything strikes a chord with you, what we spoke about today, give us a shout on mentality underscore mag Twitter or the Mentality Magazine Instagram. You can go through my steward personal information, and various other stuff you can find on the line. Peace.